The specific immune responses are complex interactions of white blood cells that we call the cell-mediated and antibody-mediated immune responses. The two principles that govern the system are specificity and memory. The specificity in this case, as is most chemical and biological systems, is based on shape. The cells of the immune system have the ability to recognize self from non-self at the cellular level. This recognition is due to specific shades of protein markers on the surface of cells. The analogy I like to use is when playing a team sport or fighting a battle, how do you know who's on your team? Well, they're wearing the correct uniform. Cells have a uniform that's unique to the individual. Your cells have self-markers called MHC markers or major histocompatibility complex. This is the home team uniform. Pathogens, which are foreign particles, have non-self markers called antigens. These antigens are the opposing team uniform. They're found on bacteria, viruses, bee venom, cancer cells, or transplanted organs. The presence of these antigens will be recognized by certain white blood cells and trigger the specific immune responses. To preview what we're going to be studying, let's take a look at the overview of how the specific immune responses work. It starts with the recognition of a specific invader followed by a priming and signaling stage which results in repeated cell divisions of lymphocytes to produce an army of cells that are designed to fight off that specific pathogen. That large army of cells is then divided into two subpopulations, effector cells which go into battle and memory cells which are held in reserve to handle subsequent encounters with the same pathogen. And then we have the battle which occurs on two fronts, the cell mediated immune response which will handle those body cells which have already been infected and the antibody-mediated immune response, which will handle those pathogens which have yet to infect cells. After the immediate threat is dealt with, memory cells have been left behind. These memory cells are available to respond to any subsequent exposure to the same pathogen and ensure that the later response will be both faster and greater magnitude. This is the basis of immunity. These are the players involved in the specific immune responses. We have macrophages, large white blood cells that engulf foreign particles and alert T cells to the presence of these specific foreign agents. Then we have helper T cells that are going to produce and secrete chemicals that signal the promotion of large populations of effector and memory cells. And then we have the cytotoxic T cells or killer T cells. These are the cells that are going to attack the body cells that have already become infected with intracellular pathogens. And we have B cells. B cells are lymphocytes that produce antibodies. These antibodies are Y-shaped proteins that circulate in the blood and bind to antigens on the pathogens, marking the pathogens for eventual destructions by macrophages. Now I'm going to use some extended analogies and metaphors to explain the details of the specific immune responses. Keep in mind that while I talk about battles and, and fights and uniforms and sounding alarms, these are cells. I, and they don't sound alarms or fight battles or tell people things. These are metaphors, mental images, ways that I think will help us visualize the events. You need to get comfortable with using the correct terms. Now, here's how our story begins. Here's a macrophage out on patrol when it comes across a pathogen, an invader. It recognizes that the pathogen doesn't belong by the antigens it has on it. This is a guy from the other team. He's wearing the wrong uniform and doesn't belong. So the macrophage engulfs it, digesting and disposing of the pathogen. Now the macrophage needs to let someone know. It has to signal the lymphocytes that there's been an invasion because there's most likely other similar pathogens out there that we need to fight off. However, the macrophage needs some kind of proof that there's been an invasion. If he goes back to the base empty-handed, they're not going to believe that there's been an invasion. He needs some form of proof he needs a way to get the attention of the lymphocytes. He needs to alert them as to the specific uniform that they need to be on the lookout for. So, when the macrophage digests the pathogen, it doesn't destroy all the antigens. It processes the antigens and moves them to its own surface, producing an MHC antigen complex. This is the signal that gets the attention of the lymphocytes. From here, we will begin to fight our battle on two fronts, the cell-mediated immune response and the antibody or humoral-mediated immune response. 
On the, on the cell mediated side, we're going to get rid of the already infected cells and we're going to employ helper T cells and cytotoxic T cells. On the antibody side of the battle, we need to get to the pathogens that have yet to infect cells, these extracellular pathogens. On this side, we're going to employ helper T cells and B cells, and the B cells are going to produce antibodies. Come back for the next video where we go into the details of each of these immune, re immune responses.